Hey, what's going on? This is Mal Livodi with FinanciallyPresent.com, your one-stop shop for financial and investment education. And today we're going to go over CharlesSchwab.com, but specifically the Trade tab. There are many, many features, so strap up and get ready. We're going to break down each and every one of them. Okay, so we are here at the trade screen of CharlesSchwab.com, and it's much more advanced, in my opinion, than what TD Ameritrade had. So this is a great, a great development that now have access to all of these resources. Uh, a couple things that I do like is the all in one trade ticket and we'll go through the remaining uh, items going forward. So the all in one trade ticket is very comprehensive and it allows you to put in essentially any symbol and begin trading. So if we wanted to enter in a symbol, you can go by your recent symbols or anything else that may be on your mind. So for example, let's say I want to buy an exchange traded fund, VTI. It gives me a quote immediately and then I can proceed with the details of my trade. I can select my buy, sell or sell short action. My order type market, meaning immediately while the market hours are current. Limit order means at my specific price or better stop order which is just a trigger for market order stop limit order that's a trigger for a limit order and then trailing stop order it's essentially a moving order where you can trail the price by a point amount basically a dollar amount or a percentage and then of course you can adjust the timing whether it's good for the day good till canceled so these are all very very common features that you would normally see one of the things i do like uh, more about the all-in-one trade ticket is that you can enter in your option orders from here. So for example, if you do not even want to click on stocks and ETFs or options or mutual funds, click the all-in-one trading tab and you can enter in your orders from here. They have many advanced strategies that you can immediately uh, build from here. So if you know, if you want to do a diagonal call, you click that and it automatically opens the entry forms, the exact entry forms or entries that you need, okay? If you are not approved for options on your account, you will be asked to uh, complete an application. I did it uh, last night and it was approved within about 10 minutes. So it's some level, of, some, some way it's automated, which is perfect. Now, if we migrate to the stocks and ETFs tab, that's just as simple as it was with the all-in-one trade ticket. There is nothing new here on this tab that you wouldn't see on the all-in-one trade ticket. So I would say for simplicity's sake, go to the all-in-one trade ticket. Similar for options, select the options tab and you'd be able to enter in your options trade or just do it from the all-in-one trade ticket. Mutual funds, very similar. You actually can enter in mutual fund trade tickets or mutual fund trades directly through the all-in-one trade ticket, which I find to be very helpful because uh, many other platforms I've used before, if you enter in a mutual fund symbol in the wrong order entry, then it gives you an error and you're wondering, what should I do? What did I do wrong? And you start to, to worry and you wanna give them a phone call. But if you enter in a mutual fund symbol uh, in the all-in-one trade ticket, it will be just as if you're entering it in the mutual funds tab. Here's a quick example. Right. So by entering this symbol in, it automatically changes the strategy to mutual fund. As you know, with mutual funds, they trade once a day at the end of the day because the value has to be calculated at the end. You can select your action from there, whether it's a buy, sell, or sell and buy another, review order, and go from there. Now, one of the new features that I like, um, and it's new to me, I don't think it's new to most people, uh, is this, the Schwab stock slices. It's gonna give you a brief demo, but that's what I'm here for. The Schwab stock slices is a really cool concept that I like. If you think of creating your own custom mutual fund, this is the exact way to do it. It's gonna allow you to pick from any of the 500 S&P 500 stocks, or 503 stocks available, and you can select between one and 30 of those stocks, and you have to at least put a minimum of $5 per stock. So for example, I can select various companies within the S&P 500, 
hit continue. Now it's separated those six that I selected. I can enter in an amount. The, since I've entered in one, two, three, four, five, six, the minimum I can put in is $30. Okay. If I put in $100, it'll do its best to divide it evenly amongst that, and then the remainder will go towards a, any specific company. And from here, you can indicate whether or not you wanna reinvest the dividends, uh, or if you wanna just remove that stock and change it. So you can always go back, add stocks, remove, add different sectors, and move forward. There's a list view, a grid view, but basically it is one easy way to diversify within the S&P 500. So with the Schwab stock slices, it's also important to remember that you are owning a fraction of the actual stock. So in essence, on the back end, Schwab would own the stock, but through their accounting, they will show that you own a fraction of that particular share and it's not all completely yours but as long as their accounting goes well which generally it does it will reflect in your account that you own a specific amount the dividends that you would be owned in proportion to the amount that you own will be paid and reinvest reinvested into more purchases of that stock the next feature is the thematic stock list I think this is pretty cool because what you tend to find with investing is you may have an idea or something that you're interested in and you want to zero in on investments that uh, fall into that theory or that that interest of yours. So you can look at specific themes. It could be active lifestyle, AI, caffeinated drinks, you know, like a nice cup of coffee, uh, China, Internet, e-commerce, eating out, digitization of financial services, so probably fintech basically and so on and so forth. There's so many different ones. So you can click on one, for example, and now it's gonna produce, and it's using a third party for some of this data. So Schwab's gonna put a disclosure on there telling you, hey, uh, use this at your own risk, obviously. But these are companies, a list of companies and their stocks and the allocation of the weighting of these stocks. If you were to build a portfolio using these, it shows you, hey, all of these give us that theme of online gaming at this weighted percentage. So now you have your list of stocks and you'll see the disclosure here at the bottom. Order status. So now this is where you would see all of your orders. Obviously I don't have any orders in this account yet, but I would be able to review all open, partially filled, filled, and even canceled orders. Okay, so order disappeared, you wonder where, where it went to, it would be here. You say, oh, it canceled because it expired, or so on and so forth. And this is very common with any other brokerage firm that you would uh, use as well. And they have a remember feature. So I'll be excited to use that as well uh, when I have some transactions in this brand new account. Next, bonds. So the bonds feature, great. It shows you everything you need to see at the initial click. You may have to accept an agreement, but the bond market is completely different than the stock market. They are related, but different. And it shows you all the best rates uh, at the forefront. And then if you want to delve a little bit deeper and go into these, maybe let's say corporate bonds, let's say we can click here. And now it's going to give me a list of the various bonds that are available. A feature that I like and is also available at other brokerage firms is the ladder feature. You can do a CD or a treasury ladder. And this is basically where we are staggering the different expirations of these, these instruments, these, uh, these CDs or bonds. And we're not buying them all with one expiration date. We will have layered expiration dates so that we're getting an average level of return. When you step a little bit further away from the trade feature, you'll still need to click here and then the, the window looks a little bit different. We'll go to bonds. So now it's jumped back to where we previously were. CDs, very similar as well. Nothing much new to see there. CDs are traditionally at banks and uh, with the treasury. Department of Treasury. Futures. The 
futures market is very different. It is not the same as the stock market. You are trading contracts uh, on future contracts on commodities. Okay. Click on market overview within the futures page and you'll be able to see the heat map or the, or the quote board. And they have various features where there's charts, video analysis, and other things. But uh, feel free to research more of that on your own. Let's go back to futures from here just to show you where we are along this line. IPOs. Before you see this page, there is going to be an agreement and a form that basically says, hey, do you understand what IPOs are? Do you know the risks? And uh, do you understand that your conditional offers to purchase an IPO, you know, it's not guaranteed. You may or may not get the shares. As you know, IPO is an initial public offering, meaning that this company is now going public for the very first time. And in order for them to do that, they allow certain people to buy shares ahead of time. With that comes the caveat that you aren't to sell them within the first 30 days. So also that means that the stock's not marginable for 30 days. So there are a bunch of agreements or just things that you need to understand if buying an IPO and that ultimately there is risk, okay? Uh, even a little bit more than regular stocks that have been trading for years and years and years. Trading platforms. So right now you have Street Smart Edge. You do have to get access for that. Uh, and you would do that through this uh, I'll do that a separate video for something like this and then I know that in the future you will have access to the thinkorswim platform which is normally available through TD Ameritrade because they bought thinkorswim years ago but it will eventually migrate to Charles Schwab so you have access to that and then lastly there is watch list so watch list common with any brokerage firm that you would use you can click on manage watch list and create one from here. So I can say demo and I can start typing in symbols. Okay, so I've added a stock through here. Okay, if I want to continue to add symbols, click that button and hit add. Let's see what happens if I do a mutual fund. You can add mutual funds to the same watch list. So we know we can have stocks, ETFs, and mutual funds all on the same watch list. You can manage them from here, edit watch list by renaming them. You can move around the order of the various items. And there you have it. This is a quick overview of the trade tab with charlesschwab.com. If you're interested in any of the other tabs, I'm going to go through them in separate videos. So feel free to check those out. If you like this video, I want you to hit that like button, subscribe if you're new to the page and turn on notifications so that you don't miss out on future content here at Financially Present. And until next time, stay present.